Hi, I'm Miles Nelson. If you don't know me very well, I'm a student at St. Cloud State University, and this upcoming January, I'm going to be studying abroad in Annick, England. We'll be living and studying out of the site of the famous Harry Potter Castle, Hogwarts, the one that was filmed in the movies, that is called the Annick Castle. And we'll be living there, studying from there, and have the opportunity to travel possibly across the UK and even into Europe. And this vlog series is going to you know, chronicle both my journey to get there, as well as my time while I'm there, and as I travel and come back, wrapping up my experiences and showing what I've learned, how I've changed. And so that's really the purpose of this. And I'm really excited to actually get a vlog series started where I can um, really communicate with a lot of people. Um, my dream job is just to basically talk to people and, and encourage people. Um, and so this is a good start on a way to do that because it's, it's a way for me to communicate and really expand my audience to uh, many more people than may know me initially. So I'm um, really excited to get this started. And I'm just going to go into a few things um, to kind of fill you in on what's going on, where I'm at, and what this looks like as far as traveling uh, abroad. So like I said, I'm going to be studying abroad in Annick, England. It's spelled A-L-N-W-I-C-K. And they have a river called the River Alm, which they pronounce the L, but their city and the castle they call Annick. So that's where I'll be. And if you read that on the internet, don't pronounce it Alnwick because people from there and eventually me will become upset that you're saying Alnwick. So it's Annick. And that is in the north of England. It's actually up towards the towards the northern end of England, almost towards Scotland. It's just outside of the city of Newcastle is the biggest nearby city. So it's pretty close to the coast on the east northeast side of England. Um, and things I'm really looking forward to is actually flying. I have never been on a plane, never had a chance to fly anywhere or travel really long distance. So that's one thing I'm really looking forward to. I really want to do um, my little brother and sister, Annie and Jacob. They've both had a chance to fly and go uh, overseas to the Philippines and Annie has also been to Mexico. They've had a chance to fly to go to all these places internationally. And I'm eager to catch up and try to match their flight miles. And so that's something else that's driving me to do it is um, because they've come away with really good experiences. And um, so I'm really excited to go as well. I'm also really, really excited to explore um, the countryside of England around Annick because it's a, it's a very kind of rural setting. So it's not like the suburbs. It's more of a country type of feel, um, small town. And getting the chance to go there and to walk or bike or find ways to explore the area is something I'm really looking forward to because uh, traveling, taking any chance to go drive someplace I've never been or, or walk someplace, any, any way that I can go somewhere I haven't been before is always a joy to me. So having the chance to uh, do that in a whole new country, in a whole new environment, I'm really, really excited. I'm also really interested to meet the people of England because as an American, uh, you know, we have our own views, our own perspectives on life and how it how it goes here. And I'm really interested to get perspective from another Western nation, but still a different place uh, because England is so historic and how everything is different in, in rural life versus suburban life and versus college life. So really excited for that as well. And uh, the fact that the the Duke and Duchess of that region live in the Alma Castle. I just said it there myself. Good gracious. Annick Castle. Um, they live there. So there's kind of an interesting atmosphere about the castle and the people who are there because sometimes the royalty will come. And so that kind of thing is a possibility and having maybe an idea of this higher class living in the castle and then getting to experience the people uh, of Annick itself getting to meet them, see how they live, see how it how it goes out there. Really, really interested in that and uh, building relationships with new people that, uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to meet anyone from that culture, really. Um, so that's going to be an exciting thing for me as well. Uh, if there's anything that I'm a little nervous about, it might be just the fact that I'm going to be uh, a lot further from my family than I am now here in St. Cloud. Um, my family is from the Twin Cities. So basically 45 minute drive and I'm back with my siblings and my parents. And so 
being a lot further than that, you know, being hours and hours of plane rides and across an ocean certainly is a bit daunting. And it's something, you know, that at first might be a little, um, a little bit homesick kind of a feeling. Uh, I think I'll be all right because I know I'm going to be in good hands there and uh, I'm really excited for it. And I, you know, it will really build my independence as well. But at, at first it could be a little, a little different to be really far from my younger siblings and my parents. So if there's anything that I'm maybe nervous or um, anything like that, that might be the only thing. Um, I'm excited to fly. I'm excited to be somewhere else. Just the distance and um, not being able to personally see them for four months will be a little bit different than what I've experienced before. And currently I'm in a study abroad class um, with Rachel Gardner and Jacob Kinning of our Center for International Studies department here at St. Cloud. And they're guiding us and another group who are going to Australia to study at Southern Cross University in Lismore, Australia. They are really giving us guidelines on what to expect, um, teaching us about the countries. We're going through everyone in the class uh, does a current events project where we discuss interesting or newsworthy events going on in wherever we're going to so that we all have an idea of what what's the current climate there what's going on what makes the news in england what makes the news in australia um, and learning those kinds of things is really useful so that you kind of have an idea of what it feels like to be paying attention to the news as if you were there rather than here and they're also they both you know been to england they've had the chance to be in the castle and so uh, they both have really good experience from there and i'm really looking forward to even getting more information as as the semester goes on here it's you know the beginning of november we got another month and a half or so and then leaving in the middle of january so got some time left just trying to build as much knowledge as i can about where i'm going and so we've just been going over travel tips we're going over what is uh what is some of the things that are useful when you travel abroad and some of those things are um what uh what there's a there's an online program uh produced by gallup called strengths quest and essentially what it does is it takes you through a series of questions you answer uh one way or the other like strongly agree agree neutral agree strongly agree between two different um like viewpoints uh, based on a prompt. And there's a ton of these questions and you go through it, you know, it takes half an hour to an hour. And at the end of it, it uh, has a number of metrics it uses based on the answers you gave to give you this list of your top five strengths. They don't have weaknesses, they just list, uh, uh, there's 33 or 34 strengths that they can kind of discern your top five based on the answers that you gave to the prompts. And so for me, I have strategic as my first and, and highest strength, and that definitely does describe me. I'm definitely a uh, forward thinker. I'm always planning. I'm always thinking about what's going on next and um, looking for a third option if there's only two that are given. And so that's definitely something that does describe me, and I think it's very useful when you're going to be traveling abroad because you have to be able to um, adapt and you have to be able to effectively take what's given to you and find out what's the best option. Um, if there's something in, in an airport or um, during the process of travel and you know the group doesn't know what to do or there's a number of different ways you could do something and all of it could turn out right, but you want to find out what's the best. Having a strength in um, being strategic individually is really good. So um, I would definitely say that does describe me. My second strength was belief, um, which really indicates um, someone that has strong core beliefs that they're um, not usually willing to compromise on. And that's certainly something I would pride myself on is that I do have very strong core values. They're, excuse me, they're very, very valuable to me and they make me who I am. And so because of that, I have strong purpose and I have strong direction in my life. And so that's something that moves me forward, that keeps me kind of going along a similar path and that, that, that gives me drive. So 
that's something that is common among people with that belief strength, whether it's, you know, however uh, that belief is, uh, is manifest, whether it's religious or some other type of belief. If you have strong core values, that's what this is talking about. And individualization was my third strength, which uh, essentially means that I'm good at seeing the uniqueness in each person. I'm good at seeing everyone's individual strengths and can be good at um, helping people work together based on their individual strengths and maybe their individual weaknesses as well. So individualization is really good for people who are leadership quality people or people who are trying to keep, you know, a group um, of people working together and we're only going to have 16 people going with us to Anik, so it's definitely going to be a smaller group. So when you have people who can help to guide the others when there's disagreements or when there's conflicts of uh, who should do this and who should do that, if, uh, if there's people with that individualization strength, that can help to guide the group to make the best decisions on, um, you know, task management or things like that when we're living in the castle and we have to decide, okay, who's cooking this weekend? Because we only are provided meals Monday through Friday. So we got to work together. We got to get groceries. We got to decide who's going to be on, uh, on the meal duty for Saturday at lunch, you know? So those kinds of things are useful when you have uh, an individualization strength and you can kind of pick out, okay, yeah, Josh, you're on the cooking side and, you know, maybe Steve, you're more uh, helping get everyone organized in the morning, however it might go. Uh, my fourth one was ideation, um, which definitely describes me. Essentially, the ideation strength is all about people who enjoy ideas just, just as um, individual and conceptual ideas. And thinking of new ones, trying to find new perspectives, new, I new, uh, <laughs> new ideas and concepts, and learning new things and trying to incorporate that into what I currently think and how does that affect what I think. And so ideation is definitely something that describes me. And I think it's better for me personally than necessarily in a group setting um, because uh, it's, it's just more of a mental or like intellectual strength rather than an interpersonal strength. So when I'm there, you know, learning as much as I can, um, talking to as many people as I can, and just trying to gain perspective and and new ideas about the way that I think about uh, people, the way I think about the rest of the world from another perspective um, is definitely where that will come into play, I think. And the last one, the fifth one is input. And that is also very much me. It, it's basically talking about people who love learning and experiencing new things, um, especially if they happen to um, either archive them or take souvenirs um, and I'm not as much of a collector of things but I love collecting knowledge anything I can ever read anything I can do that's new um, I always try to do it and so this whole process of going there is actually just gonna be a giant knowledge bomb to me and um, I think the input side of me is really gonna be excited about that and learning everything new, even in the classes. I'm really excited to just take these classes because they're taught by people there. It's not, um, it's not just faculty from here and you're just living there and then it's just normal classes for me. It's like in depth, it's, it's British history, it's British um, subjects. And so you're learning um, from the people there about the people there. And that's really interesting to me. And I, I can't wait to dive into that. And there's kind of an important question with studying abroad where what does it mean to study abroad versus like going on a vacation to the same place? Because there's tourists that come to the, on the castle and they stay there and they dress up in their Harry Potter stuff if they're coming because it's a, a Hogwarts um, or if there's people that are coming because it's a historic castle. It's, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years old from the early 1100s, I think. Uh, 1096 was when it was built, actually. So it's, it's an extremely old historic place. So what's the difference between a vacation there and studying abroad there? And I think the main difference is um, what's, what's your mindset going? What's your intent? Um, to, as a tourist, you're just going there to see it, to uh, maybe walk around, check out the walls, um, marvel at the fact that, oh, look, a Duke and Duchess live here. 
studying abroad is more like, what can I learn from this place? What can I learn from living here? What can I see here that, um, that I can take with me and somehow apply that? And studying abroad is just a much more in-depth thing than going on even an extended vacation. Like people will go and, and live in a new place for a number of months, but it's usually not to learn. It's just to experience a new place or maybe to escape where you're coming from. And studying abroad isn't as much about escape as it is about experience the new pl experiencing the new place. It's not that the old place is bad, but that the new place is really interesting and different. And so studying abroad is really about going there and having the chance to, like I said earlier, learn from people from there. It's not, it's not just a, a course taught by an American professor about British history and British culture. It's British culture from a British person. So you have the chance to interact and experience um, these subjects from people who are living in them and have lived in them and have ancestors that have lived in them. And also, uh, as a part of learning and living there, you're also interacting with all of the people from there. There's very few Americans there. It's going to be our group. Um, and that's about it. So it's really going to be interesting to be immersed in that. They say that immersion training for languages is the most effective way to learn. Put a kid in a, a Spanish environment and they pick up on it faster than with a book of Spanish words translated to English. And so that's one of the things I'm looking forward to is really learning about English culture and, and English people from them, from living among them. And so that's why I'm definitely going to be committing to like probably volunteering in the community. We're going to be bringing with a community service project that we're going to be voting on later in the semester. I'll update you on what the, uh, what the options are there, which one we do select. But as we're there, we're going to be volunteering with that. And we also will have opportunities. Anik is a very volunteer based community. So there's lots of opportunities to volunteer. I'll probably be doing that just to really get experience with the community, with the people, get to know them there. And so that's something I'm excited about and really can't wait to to be involved in a different place than where I've been before. And so this, this vlog is starting to run long, so I'm going to try to wrap it up here. Uh, basically. I'm going to be traveling overseas to England, January to April, middle of January to the end of April 2017. It's going to be a huge amount of fun. I'm going to be um, doing more vlogs before I leave, probably record a mashup of the actual travel process, probably record with my phone or something from the airport, through the traveling, on the plane, whatever I can do, uh, as long as I don't get arrested by the FAA or something like that. And <laughs> <laughs> and then um, continuing these vlogs while I'm there. And I also have more recently become an aspiring poet. And so while I'm there, I'm sure I'll be inspired by the castle, by the surroundings to write. And so I'll probably upload some of those here along with some of the ones I've already written. So you can be on the lookout for that. And I can't wait to take this journey and really bring it to uh, all of you. So thank you for watching.